Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com with the Rapture Update, April in the year of our Lord 2022. We have been studying together in the uh, first epistle of, the, of Corinthians, verse by verse. But I have put that on pause uh, because I think that there's some relevant information that ought to be passed along uh, for other believers and other watchmen to uh, perhaps build upon. It's been a long, a long journey uh, from what we believed was the rapture uh, picture in the heavens, the uh, Revelation 12 sign back in 2017. And uh, when I proposed the, the, I didn't really see anything significant else after that in, until 2018 and then 2021 and then 2021 came and, and passed and uh, we were still here. I think many got discouraged. I don't think that there's any reason to be discouraged. And so what I want to do in this video is I want to try to, for those who uh, happen to stumble on this video, I want them to, sh to understand that there's every reason under the sun. Uh, and you could spell that S-O-N to believe that our time here on earth as believers in Christ, the body of, the, of, of Christ, the church, uh, that this dispensation of grace, that, which we are now in, that we've been in ever since Christ ascended, is about to come to an end. Uh, I've never lost that hope. Uh, there's just so many, the, it's the convergence of so many factors, not just, you know, a few, that, that tend to make me believe that we're not just, you know, running against the wind here. I think we have the wind at our back. And so I'm going to go through uh, several uh, uh, reasons. I'm going to present through a series of slides here on the screen. I'm going to try to explain each one of them. There's, there's quite a few, so if you'll bear with me, uh, we're going to go through that, and I'm going to explain to you why I believe that the rapture is most definitely at our door, at the door, okay? Uh, many of you uh, who do not believe in a pre-trib rapture, I would encourage you, admonish you to consider the very nature of Christ's death and what that death accomplished for, for you, uh, for us, His people. The very nature of the body of Christ itself, just that alone. Is, is, enough, uh, is enough proof that we're not destined for that period of wrath. So I want to point that out uh, before we go on. I also want to say that, that it, many of you understand that it is not my intention at all to be dogmatic about any particular date, uh, even though I may feel strongly about it. Uh, who's to say that we will not still be here, you know, several years from now. But I have a hard time believing that all of what we are seeing and have seen is merely coincidence because we don't worship a God of chance. We worship a God who is in absolute, supreme, sovereign control of every single last event and circumstance that occurs in our lives. And that is especially true when it comes to numbers, uh, dates. Uh, and so we're going to look at this and, uh, and I'll have a, if you've, if you can bear with me to the end of this, I, I think I've got something that uh, I want to show you that you may find uh, beyond 
remarkable. So thank you for joining us. And uh, so let's, uh, let's get right into it. Now, many of you will probably wonder, well, Steve, why are you starting with this slide? And, and what has it got to do with anything? And this was, a, uh, I snapshotted this from the, the whitehouse.gov website. Uh, this was uh, remarks by President Biden announcing his response to the Russian actions in Ukraine. And I want you to notice the date and the time. Now, you can call this coincidence. Uh, you know, February 22, uh, in the year of our Lord 2022, and it, uh, it was given at uh, 2.22 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's, that's uh, the second month, February, 2.22.22 at 2.22. Now, was this designed, uh, uh, arranged on purpose by the White House.gov? Uh, I don't have an answer to that question. Uh, what did it occur by accident? Well, uh, again, I don't believe anything happens by accident. And I just find this extremely intriguing. Now, you may not, but I can't help but doing that. You know, I mean, it could have been 2.23 p.m. I mean, that would have just blown the whole thing, you know, or, or February 23rd. But it's but it's 2:22:22 at 2:22 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we know that what is taking place concerning Russia and Ukraine is a very very big deal, okay? And this was our president's remarks concerning that. So I just just wanted to point that out, and start this off, this video off with that. Now. Many of you are aware that Jesus equals 888 in Gematria, uh, 74 years now of Israel since their rebirth. If you multiply that by 12, which is a divine number uh, denoting God's uh, authority, uh, it equals 888. So I just thought I'd pass that along. I find that also interesting. Uh, I don't, I don't really want to emphasize too heavily the the all this number stuff in this video there's more to it than that but i did want to slip this in here because i, I think that this tw number 12 has to do with the shemitah cycles that we're going to look at now will the second coming occur exactly 2,000 years from when christ began his ministry that's an intriguing thought it, uh, many have have suggested that 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 is possible you just need to know that we would have to be raptured this year for christ to return in 2029 if we're raptured in 2023 he would return in 2030 and you know so if we go back exactly 2000 years we go back to 29 a.d now what what occurred in 29 a.d well 29 a.d is independently confirmed by john's statement in john 2 20 that the temple was in its 46th year of construction during Passover when Jesus began his ministry, which corresponds to 29 AD. So will the second coming of Christ after the end of the seven year tribulation period, will it occur in 2029 exactly 2000 years from the, the year in which Jesus ministry began? That's the question. That's, that's what you'd want to think about because it appears that that's, that's what we're looking at. Now, there's something interesting about a 2022 rapture, and that is the fact that, that, that if we were, are, were raptured in 2022, the midpoint of the tribulation period would be in 2025. And there is a solar maximum that's expected in July of 2025 with a peak of 115 sunspots. Now, you know, these solar maximums, they, 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 these, these, uh, there's minimums and maximums. We're at the, uh, 
we're, I think we've reached the bottom of the minimum. We're on, we're on our way back up uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the maximum, which we will reach in 2025. And Steve, what does that have to do with the midpoint? Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, except that if if you you are at in the tribulation period and you won't be if you're a member of his body the church but if you're in the tribulation period and you're at the midpoint when the antichrist defiles the temple and, and claims to be god uh, when when we're when you're in that period of wrath of god's wrath uh, you could look at this as part of god's wrath because we know that so the damage that solar flares can cause okay so i just wanted to pass that along so it just it appears that the uh the cycles that this uh, the sun goes through as far as minimum and, and maximum uh, may be relevant to our discussion now this is a little bit heavier of a chart but this this is these are the Shemitah seven year cycles okay which have been confirmed by numerous individuals uh, let's start with the right up here the Hoover Roosevelt uh, era the World War II 1938 to 1945 that was a Shemitah cycle now there's one that followed that that, that uh, I don't have listed here because I started it with Israel's first full year cycle since its rebirth, 1952 to 1959. The idea here, quite simply, is that we've gone, we will go through, if we are raptured, we will go through these 12 seven year cycles, which culminate with God's government, God's rule, God's divine authority in the millennium. Uh, at the 12th cycle, at the end of the 11th cycle, okay? I would, uh, I would suggest that you take, pause this, uh, and by the way, pause it at any point during this. If, if you want to take a screenshot of something, if you want to, uh, to if, if, uh, if I get ahead of your thoughts and you, you just want to pause it, uh, replay it back, uh, uh, I don't want to go so fast with all of this that you lose track of me or I lose track of you. But when you, it's in, what's interesting about this is this is somewhat of a bird's eye view of our history, okay, since Israel becoming a nation. Uh, the, uh, each one of these seven-year cycles is interesting. If you go through it and you look at the, uh, some of the events that took place, the... Uh, the presidents that we have had here in the U.S. And, and how so much has changed. That's what really strikes me about this, is just how far we've come since JFK, uh, or the first moon landing, or Watergate, or the Ford Carter presidency, or, or Reagan. You know, when we go through Reagan to George H.W. Bush to, to Clinton to George W. Bush to Obama, uh, Trump, Biden, and we know that 11 uh, in Scripture is symbolic or it represents disorder, chaos, judgment, which would perfectly uh, align itself with the tribulation period. Uh, this 9-11 that occurred in 2001, uh, the never-ending global war on terror, folks, that will never end, okay? Because the ideology behind that is uh, is not going away and then we have russia invading ukraine in this 11th cycle so i just wanted you to look at that uh, when we get to the end of that there is a 13th if i could move myself out of the way here there's a 13th cycle which would really represent the seven years that they bury the dead and cleanse the land that's the first seven years of the millennium so i find that interesting Now, Judah here was, uh, <laughs> Judah in the Bible, it, it, his, his name uh, meaning Israel, uh, Judah was, was, the, was the name in which, you know, Israel 
was named after Judah. Okay? And uh, we're going to be talking about the date here, 14, 15 June, 15, 15, 16, 15, 16 June. Okay? This is an important date as far as is what I'm going to be talking about here because that's a date that's coming up soon. It's, uh, it, I find it extremely interesting, that date. Uh, there's, there's several dates that are really significant as far as this update is concerned, and that is May 14, May 15, and June 15, and June 16, or June 14, 15, uh, as well as May 14, 15. These, these dates are in, so I copied this off of Tor calendar. Uh, this uh, uh, coincides with you know this present year 2022 uh, on the on the Hebrew calendar marks the what you'd call the uh, the birth date of Judah which was the founder of Israel okay now this this chart is not as complicated or as scary as it might look uh, we're looking at what happened in the year 1312 B.C. Now, according to Jewish history, it's, 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 it's a pretty common, well-known fact that Moses came down Mount Sinai with the, the second tablets. The tabernacle was erected. Uh, even, even the spies returned from Canaan with bad news. This all occurred in the year 1312 B.C. Now, if, if you go over to, to the calculator, as I did here, and you go from June 5 of 1312, which would be the date, the biblical date on the calendar in which this occurred. June 5. And you go to this year, June 5, it's 33, 33 years. We've got four threes, okay? Four threes. Now, I, when I saw this, I found these four threes uh, intriguing. And uh, there is something that could be said about these uh, three, three, three years. If we look at 5 June, well, that's Pentecost this year. And we know that Pentecost is known as the Feast of Weeks, uh, that it occurs, always occurs on the sixth day of the Hebrew month of Sivan, that it falls between 14 May and 15 June that it has a double significance because it marks the all-important wheat harvest in the land of Israel. And it commemorates the anniversary of the day that God gave the Torah to Israel. 33, 33 years. So this Pentecost, this Pentecost this year marks, will mark exactly 33, 33 years, not just 33, 33 years, folks, but 33, 33 years to the day to the day that God gave Israel the law at Mount Sinai. Now, I know we're playing around with numbers here, you know, but still doing that a lot. But the 33rd verse of Ezekiel 33, uh, 3333, is God's declaration. I, I encourage you to go and read the whole chapter, but it is it basically is describing God's declaration that a day of reckoning will come to all those who pretend to love the Lord, but deny Him in their hearts and in their works. Okay? Their works. And this is related to God giving uh, Moses the Torah to the entire nation of Israel. Now, as a matter of no, as a side note, a footnote here, you really need to understand that, that the believer in Christ today is not under the law, but he's under grace. And the tribulation period primarily deals with God's judgment on the nation of Israel to bring Israel back to himself as well as judge the Gentile nations. Now this other sh chart here, we're looking at creation day one. This is a Torah calendar. Uh, they, they tend to update this from time to time. Uh, 3979 B.C. is the date that they're giving for the creation of the world uh, on 9 June. That would, that would mean that the 6,000 years would end on 9 June, 
2022 according to Torah calendar. That would give us a December midpoint. It would give us a June 2 second coming and an August 16th where the uh, 2029 where the kingdom begins, which would be followed by the fall feasts, uh, Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, uh, Tabernacles, and, and so on and so forth. Keep in mind that when Christ returns at the second coming, it's not going to be, well, and everything's just fine. I mean, you know, he's going to return and he's going to make war against his enemies and defeat his enemies. He's seen coming out of Edom with his garments drenched in the blood of his enemies. But the kingdom will be established after that point. And then as, as I showed earlier, a, a few slides back, it takes seven years to cleanse the land. So uh, according to Torah calendar, the, the 6,000 years ends this year. Uh, hopefully by the time you get to the end of this video, you'll see that how that many of these indicators uh, tend to converge. Uh, it's, there's so many things that are converging, as well as other watchmen putting out videos about 2022. They're seeing it from maybe from a different perspective, but they're still seeing the big numbers, 2022-2029, as being significant here. And I want to point out that if we go past this year and it becomes 2023-2030 or something, you know, uh, following that, uh, every year following that, then much of all of this just evaporates. I mean, all of this evaporates. Uh, we've got, you know, 70 years, 80 years. Uh, uh, just all of this stuff just tends to go away. Uh, it's like the 2,000 years since uh, Christ uh, began His ministry to 2029, from 29 AD to 2029, okay? Uh, can you imagine, and I'm sure that many probably could, but do you honestly believe that, uh, you know, uh, if let's say the rapture doesn't occur until 2023, therefore the second coming doesn't occur until 2030, now we have a situation in which Christ would return 2,001 years since his ministry began. Or let's say, it ha let's say the rapture occurred last year, okay, in 2021. Then Christ would have returned in 2028, and he would have returned 1,999 or nine, what, 98, 99 years. You see, it, it just doesn't make sense to my mind. Now, could God do that? Well, of course he could. Of course he could. Uh, what I'm afraid of is, is that is that nothing's going to happen this year. We're going to continue to go on, and people are going to say, become to say, where is the promise of his coming? And folks, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. There is a, uh, a crown that's uh, reserved for those who love his appearing and watch for his appearing. Now, this chart right here, this shows at the top you'll see R, T, M, and S, C. This R stands for rapture. This is tribulation, uh, the beginning of it, the midpoint, and the second coming. Now, there's two dates here, important dates, 514 and 614. On 514 of 34 A.D., according to Torah calendar, because... Torah calendar outright claims with no apologies that the crucifixion occurred in the year 34 AD. And so if you just simply cal calculate, just do some simple arithmetic, he was, he was buried, he, was, he rose, he appeared for 40 days, he ascended, the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost uh, 50 days, which is where Pentecost gets, gets its name. 
you'll find out oddly, and this is something that struck me as very strange years ago, was that the, the church began on May 14th. The church, the beginning of the church. The Holy Spirit came in the upper room. The, the church began May 14th. And my question was, has, a long time ago was, well, could it be that Christ uh, uh, would return for us, that the church age would end at the rapture, the church age would end on the same date in which it began? And now I just thought that might be possible. But we have a first Pentecost. The church began. Now, as many of you know, May 14 was the date in which the official date in which Israel was declared a nation again. They declared their independence from Britain. So Israel was reborn. So we've got the church born, basically, the Israel reborn on the same date. And then we here comes Along comes Orange Man, okay, for some of you. Uh, to me, he's more dignified than that. But Trump comes along, and he decides that he's going to relocate, move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem on this date. Now, you could say, well, Steve, uh, of course, so they just arranged to move that on the date of, of Israel's independence, okay? And maybe that's true, but we've got... Uh, God showing us this, and then 30 days, and uh, without going into a whole lot of detail as to why I believe there's a 30-day gap, because there's a 1290 days of Daniel that has to go somewhere, and that 1290 days, folks, you've got to do something with it, okay? You have to do something with, with, with 1260 days, uh, twice, okay, first half, second half. But you've got to do something with the 1290. You've got to do something with the 1335. They're like pieces of a puzzle. They have to go in their right place. There is no place that 1290 can go on a timeline other than at, from the beginning, okay, from the beginning to the midpoint. The rapture, 30-day gap, 1260 equaling 1290 to the midpoint. I've always believed that. I will continue to believe that. There's no other place for that 1290 to go. And if you want to, I'd have to refer you back to other videos that talk about uh, just why that is. So June 14 would be the date in which the tribulation would begin. Okay? Now what's interesting about that is that if you go back to Torah calendar, you'll see Adam was created on June 14. June 14. Go back six, five days or whatever, because Adam was created on the sixth day. Go back to the creation day one. It's like June 1 and 2. So we've got Adam created, or June 5, five 6, I think, creation day one. You go, you go to the sixth day, Adam's created June 14. Now, that's the same date that I showed you Judah was born. It also is the same date Trump was born. Okay? Now, we, we saw all those sevens associated with Trump, which I believe is not as much saying God saying, well, and those were not coincidences, by the way. It's, it's not as much God saying, well, you know, I want, I'm, I want you, you to see that there's seven years of tribulation coming. But seven means completion, the completion of the church age, uh, the church age, uh, the dispensation of grace coming to an end. But we also have associated with June 14, Moses being given the Torah in the 6,000 years ending. Now that's a lot of stuff around May 14 and June 14 with an 1125 midpoint. I'm going to talk about I'm going to be talking about November 27 here in a minute. This is a midpoint. This would be a midpoint of November 25. And then when we, we look at this great tribulation period right here from the midpoint to the second coming, which in which it would occur on 5 8 29, uh, which would give Christ certainly enough time to, de to defeat his en enemies. He makes war with his enemies. Now, many of you could say, well, Steve, God could 
could defeat all his enemies just with the word of his mouth, like he does the Antichrist, you know, at his coming. I mean, he could just, you know, at a snap of his fingers, he could defeat all. I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be more something that takes place really more literally in real time in which you know it's where in which the people are accustomed to uh, but we've got apophis and uh, the asteroid uh, april the 13th of 29 which is right before when he would when the second right before the second coming in which the second coming would occur Now, uh, so just to kind of recap that, is, is that all coincidence, okay? Because on May 15, 16, there's a blood moon, okay? This would be the day after the rapture, if the rapture occurred on May 14. May 15, there's a blood moon, and it's on second Passover, second chance for Israel, okay? because they didn't really understand the first Passover. Their unbelief set Israel aside so that salvation could come to the Gentiles. On the Hebrew calendar, you'll see uh, there's a second Passover, but you also, you'll also see there's a blood moon, uh, a total lunar eclipse. Could that be the fulfillment of Joel's prophecy? Well, could be. This is the 15th Savan that I told you about, the traditional date for the birth of Yehuda, uh, Judah, that is, okay? Let's look at a little flood data here. Uh, this is from Genesis chapter 7. For yet seven days I'll cause it to rain upon the earth, and it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth, okay? It was in the second month, the 17th day of the month. That's what we're looking at here on the calendar. The same day where all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. So we're looking at him entering the ark on 12 May. The flood beginning on 19 May with uh, Pentecost. Uh, it, with this May 14, this uh, Israel's, you know, this very significant May 14, Right here, two days after he enters the ark, uh, you got second Passover. Uh, there's the second Passover in, in 2022, uh, which is where this, this total lunar eclipse is. And you got the flood beginning. So it just, all of this tends to coincide with, with uh, everything else we're looking at. So there it is really, again, seven-day warning, uh, 12 May. Flood begins 19 May with May 14 right here in the middle. There's something very interesting about that date, May 14. It's not just that Israel became a nation again. It's not just that it was the date that, that uh, uh, Trump moved the embassy to Jerusalem. Um, I won't, I won't take time to go through this, but you can pause this, and if you want, take a screenshot of this. Uh, a lot of new beginnings happened on this date. That's my point, okay? The, the English colonists established the first permanent English settlement, settlement in America at Jamestown. Uh, the, uh, it's when the U.S. Constitution was drawn up in Philadelphia, okay? We're looking at the beginning of things. Uh, even the Lewis and Clark expedition, the first passenger flight in an airplane. Hello. Okay. You know, there, it's, it, I just find it interesting. Okay. Uh, just a simple search of, you know, what occurred on such and such day will, will produce something like this. So I wanted to throw that in. And keep in mind, this is the date in which the, the first Pentecost occurred, that the church began. Now, I think I published this before, I'm not sure, uh, this was, you know, I suggested, okay, the best timeline for spring was May 14, which had all of this stuff that I've just talked about here, uh, June 14, which makes the November 25th midpoint, that's when the long dark nights of Kislev begin, 
the temperature in Israel begins to drop, the daylight hours dwindle away. You've got uh, Apophis, the asteroid. Will it leave a debris trail? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a, an astronomer, uh, but you've got that close to his, the, the return point. Uh, seven is that number of completeness and perfection. There's, there's got to be something, at least in my opinion, my humble opinion, there has to be something associated with all of those sevens that are associated with Trump. Uh, so, now I showed you the November 25th midpoint. It was just as a matter of fact in history on November 27, 1941, uh, we're looking at the deportation of Jews from Germany, the beginning of the Holocaust. Here's something I found interesting. It, it was, uh, you know, many of you may. Remember in 89, the, the Exxon Valdez ran aground. It was, uh, it was polluting the coast with oil, 37,000 tons. That's a lot, but that's just a fraction, okay, of what's assumed to lie in wartime wrecks from World War II. Just a fraction, okay? Because there are many thousands of these rusting containers, vessels, that they've been down now below the water since, well, World War II. Uh, and uh, the world is not talking about this much, folks. You're not going to hear this on the news. There's been some good documentaries put out on this. These vessels are leak leaking oil. Uh, one documentary uh, producer uh, ref titled the video referred to it as the uh, the tears of the sea. Uh, this oil is leaking. Uh, there's been efforts made by individual environmentalists to try to get governments to do something about this, to stop uh, this catastrophe from happening because it will. The oil's going to come out. It's on the verge of doing so now. Some governments, I believe Australia being one, is uh, working, uh, I may be, it may not be Australia, it may be another nation. There's one that's, that's actively working to try to clean up those off of its coast. Uh, this is a very expensive operation. You know, they keep kicking the can down the road, uh, talking about how complicated it is, how expensive it is. It's kind of like, you know, you know, it's not happening now. Why worry about it? And I find that ex very interesting because this stuff, folks, is going to come out. The oil's going to come out. Okay, it just can't stay in there. Now, comparatively speaking, I mean, to, as far as comparing that to the Exxon Valdez spill, uh, it, it'll make the Exxon Valdez just seem like a drop in a drop of, in the bucket compared to that. Uh, we're looking at uh, 6,338 ships sunk worldwide in World War II. That was 77 years ago. Estimated, they've estimated it at 25 million tons of oil. Okay, These are ticking time bombs. And the NOAA has no solution for extracting that oil from these sunken vessels. And uh, nor the money to do it. The second angel poured out his bowl on the sea and it turned into blood like that of a dead man and every living thing in the sea died. Revelation 16.3 It has been called the black tears of the sea. Now I know I understand that I'm not colorblind. I understand black isn't red. Okay? Unless you take a look at what it looks like when it does spill. Looks more blood red to me than black. Now, many of you are familiar with the fact that Enoch uh, he is, uh, many, are, many Christians are fascinated with Enoch simply because of the fact he's a type of the rapture. God took him. Torah calendar creation year, 3979 B.C. Enoch was born 622 after creation. That's not 622 B.C., but after Adam, 
He lived 360 years, was taken in 2997 BC. Just some simple math will show that from then to, to this present year, 2022, it's been 5,018 years since God took Enoch. Therefore, 5,018 years divided by a jubilee equals 100.36 jubilees since Enoch was taken. So we are now in the 100th jubilee since Enoch was taken published this uh, a while back and it got a little bit of attention but uh, I just think that 100 jubilees is a big deal I, maybe maybe you don't maybe you'd prefer 99 or 101 but I, I just think 100.36 now I haven't been able to do anything with the point 36 except I believe it narrows that down to the very specific dates earth isn't as bright as it once was Okay, now you could, you, all right, now I understand that, that and I, I even believe that there is some truth to the fact that at least there, there, there's some truth to, to their explanation that the reason why this is is because of climate change, and that may be true, and that may, be not, may not be true. It, it really doesn't matter the cause. It's not the cause, what's causing or what has caused Earth not to be as bright as it once was. That's not the question in my mind. The question in my mind is why? Why now? Why? I mean, the timing of this, okay? Because now if you want to look at things in a, in a sort of metaphysical sense, a supernatural, symbolic, uh, spiritual sense, a symbolic sense, the earth isn't, okay? Morally, uh, theologically, uh, it's not as bright as it once was, in my opinion, okay? I think we're a lot stupider. Uh, don't mind telling you that. Many people think that the ancients were stupid. They were not. Um, I think uh, stupidity abounds today. I think especially when it comes to illumined revelation and the general public at large, and even I'll even go as far as to say Christians in the main they don't really know very much. If, if they do know it, they don't tend to trust God concerning it. I think we are living in a period in which uh, the, I've often said I believe that the light is going out, uh, especially as it concerns the truth of the gospel, so I just find this interesting. Thought I'd pass that along. Now, I call this the smoking gun, but I also want to put some question marks, like three of them here, okay? But I do find this interesting. The following calculations that I, I want to read you here, and you can print, print this on the screen. Uh, I've listed a source for this. They're based on the first edition of the King James Version of the Bible. From Adam, June 14, 3979 B.C., the, the, I'm, I'm claiming Torah calendar is the source for that, to Christ's birth, September 11, 3 B.C., is 3976 years, 2 months, 28 days. Now, from the birth of Christ to today, well, this would be yesterday because I published this yesterday, is 20, 23 years, 7 months, and 12 days. So, therefore, the entire sum and number of years from Adam to yesterday Okay. Uh, are you ready for this? 5,999 years, 10 months, 10 days. So we just need another 50 days to complete the 6,000 years. So if we go from yesterday plus the 50 days, that takes us to June 12. June 12. Now, I adjusted the chronology here to coincide with our present year because all of this that was published in the, in the 1800s and verified by many scholars, not just one, they all agreed on this. And, it's, and what's interesting is about, about all this is that it's, it's in that chronology is given and in, listed in the King James Bible. Could it be that God, as one of my brothers uh, said to me on, in, in messenger chat yesterday that God has had this under right in front of us or under our nose 
all this time uh, because and and folks I am not smart enough to go back and get you know so and so beget so and so beget so and so and add up all of that up I, I probably could it'd probably take me forever this has been done and, and in fact it's been attempted by many others uh, this is a combination of individuals who agreed confirmed one another's findings and there was a consensus here and they agreed on this and yet what I had to do was I had to go back and I had to adjust it from the 1800s in which this was written and adjust it to our current year and I was not folks I was not expecting this to come out anywhere near what it did I, in fact I really I was just waiting I was expecting I wasn't hoping <laughs> But I was expecting this to be either, you know, one way or, or another. It was going to be too low. The number is going to be too low. The number is going to be too high. It was going to be way off. It wasn't going to be anywhere near close. And folks, I was shocked. Okay? Just, I wish I had a better expression for shocked. I was electrified to see that it came within two days of everything else that I've showed you here. Two days. Now, I don't want you to look at this too hard, at least not right now. If nothing happens this spring, you might want to look at this, because I'm, but I'm going to throw this up here anyway because uh, I have had to prepare a what I believe is a, a, a valid fall timeline for in the fall, Feast of Trumpets, which I also find interesting. So don't give up on 2022. Because if you look at this, I'm not going to take the time to go through it, but if you look at this, what you're going to uh, see is, is, is that uh, there's a lot of Feast of Trumpets going on here. Uh, the Jew, I'll just quickly tell you, the Jews believe pretty strongly that, that creation... You know, God said, let there be light, you know, that this occurred on a Feast of Trumpets. That's what they believe. Most, many of them do. I couldn't say most, but many. We also have uh, Noah exiting the ark on, uh, when the earth, Noah exits the ark, the, the earth is dry, okay? Now, this is according to, to their, their history, Okay, on a Feast of Trumpets, okay, in the year 2105. Uh, they, many believe, as I also believe, also believe that, that Christ was born, the birth of the Messiah occurred on a Feast of Trumpets. And of course, we were looking at the Feast of Trumpets this year. Now, that's a lot of births. That's four births, okay, all on a Feast of Trumpets, in which if the rapture occurred, okay, if the rapture occurred, right here, 28 September 2022. You count 2550 days exact, it takes you to Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, 20 September 2029. You know, I think sometimes we miss seeing the forest for the trees. We tend to search for out, all these outward proofs and evidences when the real proof, I believe, Well, I'm going to suggest it may just lie within us, within ourselves. You know, you, you repeatedly see some specific number or, or something else, and there's a reason you do that. You do that, I believe, because your spirit is being drawn to the heavens, folks, toward Him. Uh, you didn't cause that. I think the real smoking gun here, folks, may be just ourselves, all right? Uh, many of you uh, would probably agree with me on that. I think you'd, you'd say that you know that that's true. We can't say that this has been true of those who have gone before us. They never saw what we are seeing. They couldn't. No nation, Israel for one thing. Yes, I do believe that you are the best evidence that our departure is near. Many pastors in 1948 cried tears of joy when they received news of Israel's rebirth because they understood the significance of that day. Yeah, the, the real proof of the Lord's coming 
is near, I think, is just ourselves. And it doesn't take all of us realizing this for it to be true. We can keep publishing timelines year after year, but, but it won't help us uh, see any clearer what we should have already come to know by now. We are the greatest sign that His return is near. I'm not suggesting that we give up searching or watching. I am suggesting that we may be the only real proof that we're going home soon. The signs that we often talk about were, were really uh, given just to Israel concerning the second coming, and, and we may be on the, the edge of all that, but dearly beloved, everything we see occurring now is external, viewed outwardly, subject to change. But our spirit, our spirit, will never change. We've heard the bell ring, and we cannot unring that bell. So that's it. I love you all. I truly do. We'll be going back to our study in 1 Corinthians. Uh, we'll be beginning in chapter 6. Until then, this is Steve. Rest in him. And thanks for watching.